Level 1. The Mechanical Era Long before electronic circuits and microchips, the earliest forms of computers were purely mechanical. These machines relied on gears, cogs, and human power to automate calculations that would otherwise be time-consuming or prone to error. The abacus, which dates back thousands of years, is perhaps the most iconic example, offering a simple but effective way to track sums and differences. Over the centuries, inventors experimented with more elaborate mechanical calculators. Blaise Pascal's Pascaline, built in the 17th century, used a series of gears to add and subtract numbers. A few decades later, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz enhanced mechanical calculation by enabling multiplication and division. However, the true visionary of this era was Charles Babbage in the 19th century, who designed the difference engine and later the analytical engine. Babbage's blueprints describe functions akin to modern computers, including a store for memory and a mill for computation, plus a means to read instructions from punch cards. Though never fully built in his lifetime, these designs hinted at the idea of a programmable mechanical device that could handle complex calculations and even branching logic. Despite the brilliance of these inventions, mechanical computers were severely limited. They were large, expensive, and delicate, prone to jamming or misalignment. The cost and complexity prevented widespread adoption. Still, the mechanical era laid the philosophical groundwork for automated computing. More than just number crunchers, these machines symbolized an aspiration that human innovation could free us from drudgery and open the door to entirely new domains of scientific research. This level also set the stage for the introduction of electricity, which would soon transform these cumbersome contraptions into the foundational elements of modern computing. Level 2. Electromechanical and Vacuum Tube Computers By the early 20th century, the world was on the cusp of a new technological age. Scientists began harnessing electricity to augment mechanical calculation giving rise to electromechanical devices like the Harvard Mark Books. These machines relied on a combination of mechanical relays and electrical impulses to handle more intricate tasks than purely mechanical units could manage. While still massive in size, they could achieve faster and more reliable calculations. This hinted at the direction computing was headed. More speed, more complexity, and more adaptability. A much bigger leap came with vacuum tube-based computers. Vacuum tubes, which resembled small light bulbs, could serve as electronic switches to represent bits of information, like on-off states. Early examples included the Colossus machines used by British codebreakers during World War II to decrypt German messages, and the ENIAC in the United States, which calculated ballistic trajectories. These computers were heralded as marvels of engineering, running thousands of operations per second, unprecedented performance at the time. Yet the vacuum tube age was not without flaws. The tubes were fragile, generated enormous amounts of heat, and had short lifespans, leading to frequent failures. ENIAC, for instance, occupied an entire room and required constant supervision to replace burned-out components. Electricity consumption was high, operating noise was intense, and programming them was daunting, often requiring manual rewiring. Still, the ability to perform complex computations at electronic speeds, no longer bottlenecked by mechanical gears, revealed the breathtaking potential of automated machines. The seeds of programmability had been planted, opening the door to new scientific achievements, from nuclear research to astrophysics. It was only a matter of time before innovators sought smaller, more reliable ways to electronically compute. Level 3. The Transistor Revolution In 1947, three researchers at Bell Labs, John Bardeen, Walter Bratton, and William Shockley, invented the transistor. This tiny device replaced the vacuum tube's role as an electronic switch, but required far less power, generated less heat, and lasted much longer. Although it took a few years to perfect the manufacturing process, the transistor proved a game-changer. Early transistorized computers in the 1950s and early 1960s showcased remarkable improvements in speed, size, and reliability compared to their vacuum tube predecessors. Outside of large-scale computing, transistors sparked an explosion in consumer electronics, from portable radios and TVs to early spaceflight instruments. The concept was simple. If you could cram enough transistors together, you could build incredibly capable machines that were smaller, cheaper, and more robust. Reliability skyrocketed, maintenance costs dropped, and the stage was set for even greater feats of miniaturization. However, the real significance went beyond replacing vacuum tubes. The transistor revolution upended how we think about computing's future people began to realize that each generation of computers could be made exponentially more powerful than the last if transistors kept getting smaller and more plentiful. This notion, later articulated as Moore's Law, 
would guide decades of innovation, fueling an insatiable desire for higher performance and pushing the boundaries of physics. Transistors propelled us into an era of integrated circuits, making the dream of computing available to businesses, laboratories, and eventually personal users an impending reality. Level four, integrated circuits and mainframes. The next transformative step was integrating multiple transistors, resistors, and other components onto a single piece of silicon, creating integrated circuits or chips. Pioneers like Fairchild Semiconductor, Texas Instruments, and Intel introduced microchips that were smaller, more efficient, and easier to mass produce. This development allowed computers to pack more computational power into a smaller footprint. By the 1960s, large organizations routinely deployed mainframes, room-sized machines that served hundreds or even thousands of users via terminal connections. Notable examples included IBM's System 360, which standardized architectures and paved the way for software compatibility across an entire product line. Mainframes became indispensable in various sectors. Banks managed massive financial records, airlines automated reservations, and government agencies processed census data. For the first time, entire businesses and institutions were built around the capabilities of computers. This era also marked the emergence of data centers, specialized facilities to house and cool mainframes, ensuring they ran continuously. Level five, the personal computing era. By the 1970s and 1980s, integrated circuits had advanced to the point where a complete central processing unit, CPU, could fit on a single chip, commonly known as a microprocessor. Intel's 4004, introduced in 1971, and subsequent models like the 8080 and Motorola's 68000 series unleashed a new wave of innovation. Garage enthusiasts, hobbyists, and small startups started experimenting with building their own microcomputers. The Emite's Altair 8000 8800 is a famous example that inspired the founders of Microsoft to write its first product, Altair Basic. Then came the Apple II, the Commodore PET, and the IBM PC in 1981. These machines took computing from corporate or university labs and placed it onto desks in homes and small businesses. Enthusiasts could program in languages like Basic, run word processors, and even play games. New software companies emerged to provide operating systems, productivity suites, and entertainment titles. This personal computing revolution democratized technology, granting individuals the power once reserved for mainframes. But with great power came new problems. People discovered viruses, malware, and vulnerabilities. Home users faced the learning curve of installing software, managing operating systems, and connecting peripherals. Yet the cultural impact was enormous. The rise of personal computing accelerated the spread of digital literacy, fueled creative expression, desktop publishing, early digital art and video games, and laid the foundation for an increasingly interconnected world. The idea that anyone can own a computer was both radical and empowering, setting the stage for networking on a global scale. Level six, the internet and networking revolution. Parallel to the personal computing movement, a separate revolution was brewing, computer networking. The Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, ARPANET, Funded by the U.S. Department of Defense, first linked a handful of universities in the late 1960s. By the 1980s, academic institutions worldwide started adopting common protocols like TCP IP. In 1991, Tim Berners-Lee introduced the World Wide Web, making it easier for anyone to publish hyperlinked documents accessible across the globe. Suddenly, the internet transitioned from a small, research-focused network to a robust platform for commerce, communication, and content. Websites proliferated, email replaced postal letters for urgent correspondence, and file sharing upended how information was distributed. The dot-com boom of the 1990s reflected ballooning investor confidence in online businesses. Some soared to great success, while others collapsed during the dot-com bust. Yet the internet endured, weaving itself into the fabric of modern life. However, new opportunities brought new threats. Cyber attacks, hacking, spam, and online scams became prevalent. Privacy issues arose with targeted advertising, data mining, and government surveillance. Moreover, misinformation and social media echo chambers triggered cultural and political challenges. Despite these drawbacks, the internet fundamentally redefined global communication. It enabled real-time collaboration across continents, accelerated scientific research, and inspired visions of a world where knowledge was accessible to all. The foundation was laid for an always connected society, culminating in the next leap, mobile and cloud computing. Level seven, mobile, and cloud computing. By the early 21st century, cell phones evolved into smartphones, handheld devices sporting processors more powerful than the computers that once sent astronauts to the moon. Apple's iPhone, released in 2007, 
catalyzed a seismic shift. Smartphones quickly became portable hubs for communication, entertainment, and commerce. High-speed mobile data, 3G, 4G, and now 5G, meant that people no longer needed a wired connection for complex online tasks. Apps, location services, and instant messaging restructured social norms, blurring the line between online and offline life. In parallel, the concept of cloud computing gained traction. Instead of running software on personal devices or local servers, companies and individuals could outsource processing, and storage to vast data centers operated by providers like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. This distributed infrastructure drastically cut costs, allowing startups to scale up quickly without purchasing their own hardware. Entire industries migrated workloads to the cloud, reimagining business models around subscription-based software and always online services. Yet this level introduced new complexities and vulnerabilities. Centralizing data in massive server farms meant that outages or security breaches had far-reaching consequences. Concerns over data ownership, privacy, and the dominance of tech giants emerged. At the same time, the ability to sync data across multiple devices, home computers, smartphones, wearables, expanded productivity and convenience. Mobile and cloud computing thus reshaped daily life in global economies, paving the way for an even more data-intensive era. Artificial intelligence and high-performance computing. Level 8, AI and high-performance computing. In recent years, a dramatic uptick in computing power and data availability converged with breakthroughs in algorithmic design, sparking an AI renaissance. Machine learning, and specifically deep learning, gained traction by leveraging graphics processing units, GPUs, and advanced computing clusters. Tasks once considered exclusively human, such as recognizing objects and images or understanding spoken language, were suddenly within reach of algorithms, often with human level or better accuracy. This AI revolution extends beyond consumer applications like personalized recommendations and virtual assistants. High-performance computing HPC systems, featuring massively parallel architectures and sometimes specialized AI accelerators, tackle grand challenges ranging from climate modeling to genetic sequencing. Researchers push for exascale performance, aiming to perform a quintillion operations per second. Meanwhile, large technology companies and startups alike race to develop next-generation AI that can interpret data in real-time, automate complex tasks, and assist in decision-making across industries. Nonetheless, the race for AI dominance raises ethical concerns. AI systems can inherit biases from training data, perpetuating societal inequalities. The intensifying arms race for advanced AI also risks centralizing power in a few corporations or nations, raising issues of accountability and fairness. On top of that, the concept of artificial general intelligence, AGI, machines capable of understanding and learning any intellectual task that a human can, looms in the speculative horizon, hinting at a future with profound implications for employment, privacy, and humanity's role in a world where machines can match or exceed our cognitive abilities. Level 9. Quantum Computing Beyond the horizon of classical computers lies quantum computing. A realm where bits are replaced by qubits, quantum bits, that exploit quantum phenomena like superposition and entanglement. These unique properties allow quantum computers to handle specific complex problems, such as factorizing large numbers or simulating molecular interactions, at speeds exponentially faster than today's fastest supercomputers. Organizations like Google, IBM, IonQ, and numerous startups are racing to develop stable, error-corrected quantum psi. The potential of quantum computing is staggering. It could break current encryption algorithms, revolutionize drug design, optimize complex logistical problems, and shed light on physical phenomena that are otherwise intractable to model. However, many hurdles remain. Qubits are prone to decoherence, and maintaining a quantum system often requires temperatures near absolute zero or ultra-high vacuum conditions. Quantum error correction demands redundant qubits to keep any computation stable significantly complicating engineering efforts. If or when quantum computing achieves practical scale, it will likely prompt a rethinking of cybersecurity. Governments, businesses, and private citizens will need post-quantum encryption to safeguard data. Quantum technology could also exacerbate economic disparities if only a few powerful entities possess the resources to build and operate these machines. Yet the breakthroughs it promises, particularly in areas like material science and cryptography, make it one of the most eagerly pursued frontiers of computer technology.